we actually sank our crest made a, a print for that uh but that's the original painting and i always have like the little beepy coming out which is hilarious <laughs> true to life a real pincher dog has a nasty pee, pee on this episode of three shots three questions we're with artist cruz ortiz from paris france to paris texas his tex-mex meets pop art styles been seen around the world and we find out how it all got started cruz thank you for joining us on three shots three questions you're welcome thanks for having me on I'll tell you how the show goes. Cool. We'll take a shot of tequila. I'll ask you a question, and then we'll repeat that for questions two and three. I, I'm actually a very, I love tequila. Got some great health qualities to it and All benefits, right. so I'm down. Shot number one. Salute. Question number one. Salute. All right. Your art has just this unique style. It's pop art, but on my spicy. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. What was your upbringing like, and how did that influence your art? I was born in Houston, Texas. Uh, my uh, parents moved around a lot. Then we lived in El Paso for a little bit. And then we ended up uh, settling down in the suburbs of San Antonio. One of those things that really transcended my work is just my existence of being here. And I've been pulled by, you know, different entities and curators like, dude, why are you in San Antonio? You should be like in Berlin or, you know, New York City or LA. And I'm like, no, I. I'm, I'm getting all my needs here, and I'm able to reflect uh, in a much more substantial manner. And so with that, I mean, that's what you're seeing is not just the language, the use of color, the use of line, even just the text formations become recognizable. If you drive down the street in all the taco and tire shops, you see the influence uh, in the work immediately. Like even driving over here. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it's just, and just, I, you know, the beauty of our people being very, rom I mean, and I don't mean to say romantic in the sense of like, oh, and love and love. Yeah, that's definitely the component I'm, I'm using. But I'm talking about like the hard worker that we are. That's what is happening in my work. They definitely, you know, address how we see ourselves. And I think that's a big issue, like especially with, you know, Latinos. What I'm doing is part of that, that kind of for me and also my community. I mean, I've done lots of community activism type of stuff, and it's always involved that idea of like reflection. When people look at my work, they're gonna connect to it somehow. You've done some corporate work too. What I ended up having was absolutely asked me to collaborate with them. And I just would have never thought of being a commercial artist, because that's like so taboo. You're like, oh my God, Chris, you're such a sellout. It, it's a huge honor, like as a contemporary artist, to be able to collaborate with an entity like that who's has a history of collaborating with amazing artists, you know, like Keith Haring and everybody else. And I'm like, oh uh, yeah, I gotta do it. And absolutely even told us directly, like there's a huge reason why we picked you. We, we think you uh, represent the state so well and the future of the state, uh, obviously being Latino and a lot of the, the different direction I'm taking then a lot of artists aren't doing that in New York and LA. This leads me into my second Question, which means second shot. Yay! Yeah, so here second we go. Shot. We'll do the uh, traditional pariva. Pariva. Pa abajo, <laughs> pa centro, centro, pa dentro. You use your art in a lot of way to express political uh, activism. What do you have to say uh, about that? Well, I mean, you bring up something pretty cool. And if you ever come to the studio, there's like a crap load of artwork. And I realized that it was through the practice that I, like I got to the point where, you know what, I'm gonna do what I want. We've got to come to a place where, you know what? I have something to say, and I'm gonna say it however the hell it comes out. I mean, I've just been fortunate to like have that ability to like make things and pretty pictures. And, and so with that, I'm able to like really convey those things. It's, yeah. now I'm here. Like, and like this is a great painting where it's this cowboy character with this huge mustache and it says, Te amo. And like, yeah. that's confident. I mean, it, it you look at that like, damn, man, that's, you're telling me you love me? I love you too. <laughs> and I had another, an, an art professor always tell me, you're supposed to paint what you know. For me, it's always been that. You're supposed to go there. You're supposed to create something that is designed for not just reflection on experience or conveying some sort of like idea, but it's supposed to somehow suck you in. And that's always the tricky part, you know, and I kind of got my devices that I use that help me do that. And one of them, of course, is language. My work, I use a lot of text. I obviously use a lot of love songs. 
And there's a beauty about the love language in songs. We can connect to that as humans. I mean, music is universal. When you see the love songs in my artwork, it's really talking about not in love with a person, but really in love with that, with the idea of bettering ourselves. And we like to call it the American dream sometimes, but I think it's a lot more than that. What we do as humans is we always want something better for our families. Like you would do whatever it takes for your family. Mm -hmm. I went to go paint some portraits live at a home for unaccompanied minors. They had just recently arrived in the United States. This kid's probably like 16, 17. Came from Honduras, left home by himself. You know, had some money. And then I, I had the embarrassing question. I was like, you know, in the history of the United States, we had something similar where people were escaping. Uh, they were slaves escaping to the North and a lot of them used the North Star. I'm like, did any of y'all do that? And they're like, no, sir. We, we use Google Maps. I'm like, oh. I was like, uh, I'm embarrassed. There's shot third question. Salud. Salud. What is the story behind the Dream Song Tower? Uh, Dream Song Tower was, was brought to me as a project from District 3 Council person, Ray Saldana. It's kind of in a weird spot. I remember him telling me, so Cruz, I have a badass project for you. Uh, he didn't say badass. Well, he probably did. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's like on the middle. <laughs> One of the probably the most busiest areas of San Antonio is Military Drive. Like, if you've ever been in San Antonio, Military Drive is like its own sovereign nation. Like all, you know, all your needs are met. The snobby art person in me is like, um, this is not the Nasher Sculpture Garden. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, this is not in like, you know, some sculpture corridor or like in Montrose. It's like middle of where Rasa functions on a daily, you know, schedule and daily, you know, regiment. And I realized that I wanted to make a piece that talked about the missions and just understanding what that meant to the people. And so the structure itself is very based on Native American type of architecture. At the same time, it talks a lot about a very important topic in, in Latino art, in Chicano art specifically, which is rascuachismo, which is, you know, doing with what you have. It's kind of like when you're driving, your muffler falls off, and you're like, oh, no problem, I got a belt, bitch. And then you like, get under the car, and you're like, dollar shine. I'm the ganchos, dude. And you're like, <laughs> the ganchos, right. And it's like, Rasa was like, que es eso? Like, what the, mira, what's, what's that? Like, oh, hell no. That looks like, you know, someone went to the junkyard and put something up. Now, again, if you look at what I was talking about, like, connect, using devices to connect. Well, for me, I'm like, sweet. Like I made the connection already. Whether they like it or not, they know that there is some sort of physical, spiritual, whatever, there's a connection to something already. So I wanted somehow to convey that. And so I use lyrics from Selena's song, Dreaming of You. I also put on, you know, different iconographies that represented the neighborhood. Like the birds represented a lot of the grackles, the migratory birds. Uh, there's the donkey lady, which there's a huge myth about that. There's these <laughs> claws that come into the foundation that talk about the Com El Camaroncito nightclub, which is the Dancing with the Devil song that everyone has. Uh, there's a bunch of, there's like an ojo, like, you know, the idea of ojo powers yeah. and all that. Public art, honestly, it's like anything that disrupts the norm in a public sense that somehow gives back to you. It's a really cool sculpture. Like I encourage everyone to go check it out. Cruz, thank you for joining us. Oh, of course. Three shots, three questions. <laughs> three shots, three questions, Cruz Ortiz. <laughs>